So I went to a book festival. I went to Hay. I'm currently experiencing what I can only describe as like a Hay festival hangover. Hay fever, <laughs> if you will. I was at Hay festival for eight days and I feel so, whoa. I mean, my voice apparently decided to illustrate how I feel. <clears throat> I feel so run down and tired and sick because it was an intense eight days, but I'm home now and I have some books to show you, which I picked up at the festival in the bookshop. So let's talk about them. Oh, well, firstly, this book, In the Shadow of the Mountain by Silvia Vasquez Lovado. This is being adapted into a movie and Selena Gomez is playing Silvia and she's like casually she was talking to me in the green room. She kind of gave me a copy of this book and even signed it too which is so sweet. But we were chatting in the green room and she just casually mentions that she has a meeting with Selena Gomez in a couple days. I was like, what are you doing? Wasting your time talking to me when you have a meeting with Selena Gomez in a few days. But um, how cool is that? So we'll see, that is gonna be turned into a movie very soon. Despite a high flying career, Sylvia Vasquez Lovado knew she was hanging on by a thread. Deep in the throes of alcoholism and hiding her sexuality from her family, she was repressing the abuse she'd suffered as a child things had to change. Sylvia began to climb. So she went on to climb Mount Everest and that is what this book is about. An extraordinary story about an extraordinary woman's life and it's won many awards. So that is In the Shadow of the Mountain. Two more signed copies of books that I have. Firstly, How to Leave the House by Nathan Newman. I got to interview Nathan on stage um, and we chatted all about their debut book and the fact that they were taught by Zadie Smith and how that kind of inspired the book. It's a signed copy. How sweet is that? Having a signed and personalized copy is just such an amazing kind of souvenir from the festival and from getting to chat to an amazing author on stage. It was their second ever event as well. So that was really special to get to be a part of that. And their parents were in the crowd and they were such a good speaker as well. So it's Nat West's last day before he leaves for university. And there's only one thing on his mind, the deeply embarrassing package he ordered to his house, which still hasn't arrived. He won't leave town without it. Any alternative is too distressing to consider. And once you read the book and realize what is in the package, you'll understand. Um, you find out what's in the package like within the first 50 pages, I'd say. Um, but the book is this really interesting structure because it's set over the course of 24 hours, but we see lots of different characters' perspectives. So we have this character, Nat West, who is on this quest to find his parcel. But in the meantime, we see him pop up in lots of other people's day. And you realize how the biggest struggle and incident of his day is just a small blip in everyone else's and how we're all kind of living these complex lives and everyone has something wackadoodle going on. This is a really interesting book. It ends in an incredibly shocking way. Um, that is How to Leave the House. This book is another how-to, this time How to Die Famous. This is by Benjamin Dean. It's a kind of actors and actresses who are working on a TV show which is kind of cursed. It has a quite cursed history. People keep dying when they work on this show or going missing when they work on this show. And it's being brought, brought back for a reboot. And we are following a guy called Abel who is new to the cast. He's joining the cast. And then three other kind of more established actors. We alternate between their different POVs. This book talks about fame and addiction and sexuality, so many different things. It is a really, really special book. It's such a page turner as well. So if you need to get out of a reading slump or get back into the habit of reading, I'd really recommend How to Die famous. This is also a signed copy. Where is it? There it is. Benjamin Dean was such a legend too. We had such a fun chat on stage about this book. That is How to Die Famous. Guys, someone else I got to meet. Stephen Fry. I can't believe I got to meet Stephen Fry. He agreed to be interviewed for my TikTok. Um, you can head over there if you want to watch the videos. I've got a few more to um, post, but uh, he also gave me this little package of his books. Now I've actually already read Mythos and Heroes. I ha have copies just behind me. So I will be sharing these with friends and family who want to read them, but I'm very excited because I do not yet have a copy of Troy. So Stephen Fry is in the process of rewriting Greek mythology or retelling, I should say. So he starts with Mythos, which is all about mythological characters in Greek mythology. Then you have Heroes, which is more about like the mortal characters. And then you have Troy, which is a retelling of the Iliad, the battle of the Trojan War. And then the next book in the series, which comes out in September is Odyssey, which is Homer's Odyssey retold. So such an interesting 
quartet of books, I guess. And Stephen Fry was an absolute legend. So that was so nice of him. Thank you, Stephen Fry. Now on to the books that I bought in the bookstore. Firstly, I picked up The Wren, The Wren by Anne Enright. This is shortlisted now for the Women's Prize. I think it has a really good chance of winning the Women's Prize. Very, very lyrical. I've started... I've read nine pages of it and already I was like blown away by how beautiful the writing is in here. I've underlined so many things already. Here's one quote that I've underlined. Uh, she's talking about how it's so hard to explain to someone when you are in pain. And I think that is something pain does to you. The pain makes you feel accused of making the pain up. Even the way you open your mouth to say, it hurts. You say, it is inside me, this pain. Please try to imagine how it feels, though I am not imagining how it feels. That is the difference between us. It's a really, really beautiful book. Our character's called Nell. Nell is a young woman with adventure on her mind. As she sets out into the world, she finds her family history hard to escape. For her mother, Carmel, Nell's leaving home opens a space in her heart, where the turmoil, where the turmoil of a lifetime begins to churn. Over them both falls the long shadow of Carmel's famous father, an Irish poet of beautiful words and brutal actions. From our greatest chronicler of family life, the Wren the Wren is a story of the love that can unite us and the individual acts that threaten this vital bond. I just thought it sounded amazing and Anne Wright has previously won the Booker Prize, so I feel like I'm gonna really enjoy her writing and from the nine pages I've read, I agree with that. <laughs> this book is one I've had my eye on for a really long time. It's called Rainbow Milk. It's by Paul Mendez. This copy is signed, but that's because there's like a signed table in the Hay bookstore. So authors who have come in to do book signings will like leave some copies of their book signed. So I bought one of them. But I did meet Paul Mendez over dinner and we spoke about James Baldwin because he was on a panel um, about the legacy of James Baldwin, who is one of my favorite writers. And so we were kind of just like nerding out over a tiramisu about James Baldwin and so then afterwards I was like I need to buy your book I, I really want to read your book and if you're inspired by James Baldwin then I feel like this is going to be great because one thing I note about all of the author talks that I go to is almost every author I enjoy reading their writing usually is inspired by Toni Morrison, Zadie Smith, James Baldwin it happens every time every time any of my favorite authors ask who are your favorite writers they almost invariably answer James Baldwin, Toni Morrison, Zadie Smith so that bodes well for reading Paul Mendes's work. I have three more books to tell you about, but first I wanted to let you know that today's video is very kindly brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the only one platform for building a website or an online brand. And the best news is you don't need any coding experience. You don't need to be an expert web developer. They have a series of incredible templates which you just customize to make your own and bring your vision to life in the easiest way possible. Like if I can do it, you definitely can too. They also have loads of incredible features like the ability to make a blog, to make an email sign up list for your customers to have flexible payments and also really smart SEO AI. That's lots of letters, but <laughs> um, the SEO is really important for making sure that people can find your website and the Squarespace AI tools help you to do that in the most efficient way. So if all of that sounds good, you can head to squarespace.com right now for a free trial and then use the code jackinthebooks at squarespace.com slash jackinthebooks to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. These are the next three books. However, in between them, I just found this envelope which has copies of all of the tickets for the events that I hosted at this year's Hay. So I did four talks on stage where I interviewed different writers. So I interviewed Coco Mellers, Elizabeth Day, and Nathan Newman and Benjamin Dean like I just showed you but look I went and got these printed so that I have copies of the tickets to my events I thought it was such a nice kind of souvenir keepsake I went into the box office and I was like hey is there any way to print tickets for an event that has already happened for an event that has already passed and they said I don't see why not so I went and had a nice chat with the team in the box office and while we had a chat they printed these all off for me which is so Amazing. These are going on my wall. Very surreal to see my name printed on a ticket. Um, that's kind of crazy to me, but I'm grateful to have tangible evidence that this actually happened. <laughs> so thanks to the Hay team. That was so nice. All the volunteers at Hay are just the best. Here's the next three books that I picked up. This is Table for Two by Amor Tolls. I actually interviewed Amor for my podcast, which is coming very, very soon. This is a signed copy. The chat was so interesting, thought-provoking. I was very, very grateful that he wanted to come on the podcast and that he was so generous with his time and his answers. So 
this book I've started to read. It's a series of short stories and a novella. They're quite varied too. The first story is about Bolshevik Russia. The second story is about a guy called Timmy who wants to be this kind of tortured writer, but he hasn't really had any life experience. He's like, damn, my parents didn't even have the decency to have alcoholism or get divorced. Like I just have nothing to write about. And then his life kind of gets turned upside down. And in the end he does <laughs> have plenty to write about. So it's a fun story. I think that Animal Tolls is really good at mixing levity and com comedic moments with complex historical narratives. So he kind of uses historical context as a backdrop. And I really enjoyed Table for Two. I just have the novella at the end to read, um, which actually, if any of you have read his book, uh, Rules of Civility, it kind of brings back one of the characters from Rules of Civility. And that is Table for Two. That was one of the questions I asked him about too, like the desire to bring back a character from your writing. Such an interesting thing to do, like to return to a character over a decade later. This book I picked up from the Service 95 Dua Lipa bookshelf at Hay. It's called Salt Houses, it's by Hala Alian, and this is by a Palestinian American writer. Where do you go when you can't go home? On the eve of Alia's wedding, her mother reads her future in a cup of coffee dregs. Although she keeps her predictions to herself that day, they soon come to pass in the wake of the Six Day War of 1967. As the family are forced to move from Nablus to Kuwait City, Alia and her husband reluctantly build a new life. But Alia's husband becomes torn between needing to remember and learning to forget, as he's haunted by the disappearance of her brother, who gets caught up in the Palestinian resistance. When Kuwait is invaded, Ali and her family once again lose their house and their story as they know it. Scattering to Beirut, Paris and Boston, Ali's children soon start families of their own, once more navigating the burdens and blessings of beginning again. I thought that sounded heartbreaking, breathtaking, um, but really, really amazing. So that is Salt Houses. And then the final book I picked up is this one. It's called How I Won a Nobel Prize. It's by Julius Taranto and I've heard really great things about this. Every time I see it in the bookstore, I want to pick it up. And so I finally bit the bullet and I did. A wickedly funny first novel about a graduate student who decides to follow her disgraced mentor to a controversial new university, sacrificing her principles to her career and the future of the planet. It's described as irreverent, generous and provocative without being polemical. How I Won a Nobel Prize illuminates the compromises we'll make for progress, what it means to be a good person and, along the way, how to win a Nobel Prize. Turns out, it's not that hard if you can run the numbers. A stunning new talent announcing itself fully formed. That is high praise indeed, and a book I'm very excited to read. So, thank you for watching this video. All the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day, and hopefully I'll see you at next year's Hay Festival. It's like a staple in my calendar, something that I make sure I'm at every single year. So, start planning your trip to the UK's Booktown for next year, and... I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.